hi everybody welcome back so in this video people are talking about guys who are nonchalant in relationships if you don't know what nonchalant means let this guy explain so let's have a conversation about nonchalant men so who is the nonchalant man the most basic way that i can put it is that he is the bad boy without the drama he has all the traits, characteristics, and emotional unavailability that the bad boy has, but he's not going to put you in danger in general. The goal of the nonchalant guy is to put in the least amount of effort to yield the maximum amount of output. Nonchalant guys are not born, they are made. The desire to put out the bare minimum comes from having their heart on their sleeves for a long time and then not giving them the best results. The reason why I know is because I'm him. Heart on my sleeve, I was an option. Nonchalant, I was the main character. And nonchalant guys don't come off as detached just for the sake of being detached. And these types of guys come about because, you know, they've been told one too many times that they're too nice. They've been told that they're boring or their actions come off as manipulation. But these men were taught to be gentle to women. And what it means for them to be locked in means that they're more accessible and more accommodating. And what you get with this mid-frequency detachment is that women are much more open to you. The most interesting thing is they're trying to figure out why you're not thirsty and then they spend a lot of time trying to make you thirsty. I got something to do, but I think I might make a part two about this. So, from his explanation, what I'm getting from this is you've been heartbroken before, so now you're guarding yourself and so the other person needs to suffer. We've all experienced heartbreaks in our lives. A lot of women have experienced heartbreaks in their lives. But the thing is, I don't see a lot of women being nonchalant. I don't know. Maybe it's just me. But if you've been through something, it doesn't mean you are the only person who has been through it. And it doesn't also mean that the next person that you enter into a relationship with should suffer because of your past experiences. I don't think it's fair. Okay, so you being nonchalant to someone because you've been hurt before, like... Is it just me? But me, I prefer guys who chalant. Okay? Please chalant. Because I don't like nonchalant thing. Like, we are too grown to be playing games. Are you with me or are you not with me? Let me know. I feel like it's a manipulative tactic. Um, a lot of guys were talking about it and women as well. So, let's get in the video and I'll come back with my thought at the end of the video. Okay? Let's get in. Those of you who are dating nonchalant people, let me show you something real quick at on google you can do this yourself if you want nonchalant could be either negative or positive the word describes someone who is relaxed and calm in a way that shows they do not care or are not worried about something if someone is nonchalant about another person's pain or trouble the word has a definite negative connotation so Google says that it is negative if an individual is nonchalant about your emotions or feelings, especially while being in an intimate relationship. So if you're dating someone who claims that they're nonchalant, that they don't express emotions or feelings, nor do they want to talk about it, nor do they want to care about it, what does that tell you? That tells you when it's time to go express your feelings and emotions, guess what? <laughs> they don't care. When they see you crying and they see you upset, guess what? They don't care. When you need them to be there for you, especially at your moment of weakness and vulnerability, guess what? They nonchalant. They don't care. So instead of accepting the fact that that's just the way they are, acknowledge that that's the way they are. And genuinely ask yourself, do you want to be in a relationship with an individual who's nonchalant? I don't often talk about dating on here, but I just want to say this. Dating men who are pleasers is the most important thing you can do for yourself. A lot of women, more specifically black women, will date men who are afraid to be vulnerable and who are nonchalant. The last thing you want if you date men is a nonchalant man. Nonchalant men are bad for your mental health. Those type of men will gaslight women into thinking they don't care so that they have the relationship upper hand. It's weird, it's manipulative, don't do it. Date men who like you. Date men who enjoy your company. Date men who want to do things for you. A lot of y'all are dating men who are asking you what you bring into the table because he's trying to decide how he is going to be allowed to treat you. If he doesn't worship the ground you walk on, don't date him. 
the worst thing you can do as a woman is not be nonchalant. And this comes as an ex-lover girl that used to be like, I'm not gonna hold anything back, I'm gonna go full force for it. When I was 21, I met this guy in Miami. Within two weeks, I was like, listen, I'm gonna fly to LA, I can't let this go. In a month, I was kind of like, what are we? I invested all this time into you, I wanna know where this is going. I think as women, the worst thing we have is this idea of scarcity mindset, whereas men have this idea of plentitude. Men not think that you are gonna be like the last good woman they're ever gonna meet. And no, they can go to the club, they can pick up some girl, and she's probably gonna start folding his laundry and feeding him within a week. This shit literally all comes down to the chase. No one wants to hear it and nobody wants to play games, but that's kind of what it is. Like about the guy that's like way too much on you. It's very off-putting. It's like, dude, what's wrong with you? When you over-invest into men and you prioritize them, you give them all of the power. Being nonchalant puts you at an advantage. Personally, with dating moving forward, I know that if I want to actually get to know someone and not romanticize this idea of them and fall in love with their potential, I have to date several people people at one time because then that way I literally cannot physically prioritize you. That eventually I can wean that down and start to see okay who really is a good person for me. This is why you will notice that men end up on top most of the time because they've taken a really long time to finally settle down with somebody. If you draw back your energy you'll realize how much oftentimes the ideas that you've created in your head are false and this person's not even as great as you thought they were. A lot of times in my own personal life he invests so much into a man for him to pick up everything I invested in to him and then go to the next girl that's like literally not even paying him any attention and treating her beautifully. It's not to say that you have to be nonchalant forever. If they're not texting you, don't text them. If they're not asking you to go out, don't ask to go out. If you feel like that's just not the person that you are, then you need to go look specifically for someone who is exactly like you. Otherwise, you are setting yourself up for disaster. Stop taking things personally as well because people have their own shit going on and stop making someone's validation and acceptance of you your self-image and self-worth. I have dated men that have treated women horribly before and then treated me wonderfully and then I've also dated men that have treated me horribly and treated the next woman beautifully. The way to leave relationships unscathed or any type of situationship is to just not over invest yourself or to take anything personal that people do. Move at the pace that they're moving. If you've ever watched Miss Sprinkle, she always talks about how the more men invest into you money wise, the harder it is for them to leave. I mean this applies also, it's just with our energy and kind of like our sexual presence and stuff. The slower you are to sleep with them, the slower you are to invest your energy into them, the slower you are to center them into your life, the easier it will be for you to leave or not care when things are not going right. Why is this generation so fake? We, we are created to love. We all want love. We all want to be loved. We all want to love. So why do we keep doing things that destroy this aspect and this thing that god has planted in us i'm just trying to i'm just trying to understand like why do we keep acting like so nonchalant towards receiving being and embodying love I'm, i just don't get this thing and i will forever say like a new level of lover girl has unlocked in me and i'm not gonna be fake i want love i want to be love i want to love love i i am everything love I was created to love. Can we all collectively stop so we can now start moving accordingly and properly? Please, I'm begging. Honestly, I went through the same thing and it took me a while to understand or to try to like figure out why it was that I was always ending up in relationships. So I had a pattern of dealing with guys who were not emotionally available, who were very nonchalant. And I kind of found myself always getting into a relationship with these kind of people. But once I turned 25, when I tell you guys, it took me turning 25 to realize that being nonchalant and being grounded were not the same thing. I think what most of us are looking for is someone that can be attentive and grounded and still be in a relaxed state while we enjoy ourselves. Of course, this does not mean that this person can't be themselves, but like when people say that they want nonchalant dudes, I think they mean nonchalant in the sense where the person can still show up for them emotionally while not getting so caught up in like the what ifs. So for example, if I'm in a relationship and I'm dating a guy, he has, a, you know, he's has a secure attachment and then me i overthink i do overthink and i come to him with an issue i don't want him to brush off the issue i want him to validate my feelings and then after he validates my feelings and he acknowledges that my feelings are not only um valid but real then he comes up with a solution 
something that I've dealt with with a lot of nonchalant guys that I have dated is that they would immediately offer a solution or they would tell me, well, why are you so invested in this or why do you still care? Why does it still bother you? This happened a long time ago, da 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 Like, they wanted me to not have that layer of just, like, emotions and i actually told one of them a long time ago if you don't want to be with someone that's emotional if you're justifying being nonchalant and telling me that i care too much maybe you need to date one of your homeboys but that's another conversation for another day but ultimately you guys need to understand like it took me a while to understand there is being grounded and then there's being nonchalant these two are not the same they may look similar but they're not the same most men are emotionally attracted to other men, just sexually attracted to women. Ladies, I'm going to put y'all on game for a quick second. I had a friend who complained to me about a guy she dated some years ago. And honestly, this is a common complaint. The complaint was that the guy she was dating is so nonchalant around her and she only knows him on a surface level. But when he gets around his homeboys, he is a completely different and open person. Do you know what that means? That means he doesn't like you. He may be physically attracted to you only, but that means he just does not see a future with you, nor does he want to form a bond with you in that way. And at this point, a lot of women mess up in two ways. Number one, you believe that if you keep physically giving yourself up, he will change his mind. He will not. And number two, you keep believing it's a reason to it, and it's not. When a man doesn't want you, it's simply because he doesn't want you. We do not think like women. And what I'm trying to say is, usually if you ask a woman why she didn't get into a relationship with another man, she will tell you exactly why. He was unkind. He was very mean. I don't like the way he treats his mother, which means he'll treat me the same way. Usually if you ask a man the same question, as to why he didn't go into a relationship with the most sweet, gorgeous, well-to-do woman, he'll say something along the lines of, I just wasn't feeling it, bro. Ladies, I urge you to understand that men are very simple. And if you're in the situation, just go about your business. It's that simple. It's nothing to take personal. It's just a part of life. Just take the L and go. It'll save you a lot of time. Anyway, I didn't want much. Take it easy. The thing is, I just feel like I'm talking to a wall when I'm talking with you because it's just I keep repeating myself over and over and over again. Like, what's not clicking? Are you dumb or something? Or or what's going on? Do you want to talk about it? Babe, I know you're upset, but insulting is not the way to go, okay? No, I am upset. And that's fine. It's... But I just feel like right now we shouldn't talk when our emotions are high. Would you like some Starbucks? Do you think that'll help you? The men are going to hate me for this one. But ladies, this is not emotional maturity. This is textbook emotional manipulation. You got to stop letting yourself get tricked by these nonchalant guys who don't like to argue. All he did was point out the one thing you did wrong in bringing up your problem and then hyper focus on that so he wouldn't have to address your problem. Now, of course, it's not at all helpful to call your partner names when you're trying to solve a problem, but it's also not helpful to dismiss your partner's problem and then try to force them to bring it up at another time. The problem that she's having in this skit is that she's unheard. She feels like she's talking to a brick wall and she has to keep bringing up the same problem over and over again. And the guy's response is to completely ignore your problem while bringing up the one thing you did wrong in addressing the problem and then fully divert away from the problem by offering you food. And he does it all while being so calm so you think he's an emotional emotionally mature man who doesn't want to argue when in reality he's just an emotionally manipulative man who just perpetuated the same problem you brought up in the first place don't let these nonchalant problem avoiding men trick you like this to all the women at the gays can we leave the nonchalant guy in 2023 and start hyping up guys who are actually present guys who actually put in effort and you can see it because I don't know what's this hype with nonchalant guys because it's all of a sudden to begin with. Like that whole too school, too, too, oh, too school for cool, too cool for school vibe. But around a person they actually like, suddenly they have this huge personality. Please do not fall for that BS. Just go for a sweet, genuine dude who likes you. So can we make a bet? We are leaving the nonchalant guy in 2023. I care. I care. Okay, sharp. What I believe is most guys play games when it comes to relationships okay nonchalant or non-nonchalant but 
the guys that are so annoying with this is the ones that love bomb you in the beginning of the relationship okay they will come with all the attention all the affection book the place give you the time of day chat with you it's like they are capable of showing you all of that okay and then once they get where they want to get they pull away because i feel like it's an ego thing for some of them because what happens is now they've been vulnerable right and they want you to work over time so that you will be at the bottom okay like i was chasing yeah i chased you and i and i called you and i tested you in the middle of the night and all that and i poured out my heart to you now is your turn and so they pull away but all i'm going to say is if a guy who is nonchalant is nonchalanting sister please cut the cord okay there's no need for that we are too grown for hide and seek or tom and jerry okay because you don't want to sign up for emotional suffering you can't be in a relationship with a guy who is not going to open up to you emotional like women we are emotional beings okay so if you can't be vulnerable with me if i can't have conversations with you if if, if you can't wrap your arms around me when you know i like i need that affection or that attention from you at that moment in time don't treat me like I'm nothing, okay? Because if you if you if you treat me like I'm nothing, then might as well just disappear in your life. Then maybe you don't need a woman, okay? Maybe you don't need a girl in your life. Maybe you just have to be by yourself. Because what's the point in dragging somebody into your life when you're not prepared? You know, you're not prepared to be vulnerable, to be emotionally available to them when all you do is have them running through hoops to please you. Like, what is that all about? Because what your ego was broken by some other woman that is a little boy talking i'm sorry like you're a child you need to heal and move on so you can give a hundred percent to the person that is coming into your life both like men and women that's what i mean if a guy ever treats you or gives you that cold shoulder and it plays the disappearing act in your life and it's not consistent with you cut the cord i don't care how nonchalant he is that is just an excuse I'm sorry. It's just an excuse. We can all be an unchallenged. But if you want to play the cat and mouse game, then switch off. You can be cold. I, I have a cold button. I just press the cold button and we can both be nonchalant. Okay? You want to be nonchalant, I'll nonchalant with you. Okay? <laughs> Let's nonchalant together. But it's too much work. Okay? You deserve someone who is going to be committed, who is going to be available, who 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 knows, you know, verbal cues and non-verbal cues like, you know, time to celebrate, time to hug, time to kiss and, you know, time to caress, time, time to cuddle. They know all of that. You don't have to tell them. You don't have to beg for it. Mm -hmm. And if your guy is treating you like that. I don't know, maybe you should have a conversation and if he's still not changing, baby find somebody else who will challenge okay but anyway let me know about what you think about all of this in the comment section i'll see you again tomorrow with another video take care of yourself bye